Welcome. So let's play Rule the Waves 2 as France starting in 1920. This is episode 11 and we are entering into 1926. And I realise that something we haven't done in all the great building frenzy is have a little look at the almanac to try and see what's going on. Here's the good old almanac and as usual it's a bit difficult to read. So I've made a couple of graphs Here's what's happening with capital ship numbers. Now I'm including ships under construction and also ships rebuilding. Watch out by the way because the almanac in the numbers doesn't include ships rebuilding, although curiously it does include it in the displacements. Obviously that's primarily of interest for carrier conversions at the moment. France, us, nearly 20 dreadnoughts, battleships, battlecruisers, and a couple of carriers, light carriers. Germany, not very much. Soviet Union, even less, although it is building its first light carrier. Britain, way out ahead of everybody. And it started a serious light carrier conversion program. Italy, a modest fleet, but still half our size. And then Japan, with no carriers, and the USA on similar numbers of battle wagons. And America also has the beginnings of a serious CVL conversion program. Those are the big ship numbers. In a more rounded sense, here's what's going on with um, the whole Navy. Here's Britain, USA, Japan, France, Soviet Union, Italy and Germany. The size of the rectangles represents their total displacement. And then within that, each class. So here are all the battleships. Here for Britain, here are all the battle cruisers. And as you can see, Britain has a huge battle wagon force compared to America, who are nearly as big as Britain. I mean, if you see the width is slightly less. America's battleships are almost, not quite, but nearly as big as Britain. Battle cruisers are much less, but their cruiser force is much bigger. In fact, Britain's cruiser force, they have a, a middling light cruiser force and a piddling heavy cruisers. Don't know what's happened to there with uh, Imperial Defence normally requiring a huge number of cruisers for Britain. Also a reasonably modest destroyer force and tiny corvette force. Britain is looking very lopsided in its fleet. Too many capital ships, not enough escorts. They're looking particularly vulnerable to a good old submarine blockade. America, as you can see, has a really nice attractive balance fleet. Japan, pretty much as Britain, pretty uh, capital ship heavy, with battle cruisers being their particular thing, and battleships with no heavy cruisers whatsoever, and with a modest destroyer force and a small corvette force. So again, Britain and France are looking very unbalanced. France, like America, is a nicely designed, well-balanced fleet, if I say so myself. Uh, but obviously France is pretty much half the size of the USA and half the size of Britain. But comparable to Japan, even though Japan leads in big ships. And then the other three are much of a muchness, despite their um, differing emphasis. So the Soviet Union only has one uh, capital ship and two buildings, but actually has a huge heavy cruiser program. They have six and they are building another eight. That's the state of play. We could take on Japan pretty comfortably if they weren't our best friends. The other three here are no trouble at all. And against the USA, Britain's looking very vulnerable and it's very tempting to build a big submarine force and then pick on Britain because it doesn't really have much to um, defend itself with. So that's where we're up to. It's turning into 1926 and of course a new year brings more obsolete ships. So we had two obsolete 12 inches. Another four battleships have also gone obsolete. So we will have to address that at some point. A pro-Soviet coup has taken place in Finland. Well, that's, that's really nice for the Soviet Union. Bit unfair. And let's go 
On to February. Italy is offering to sell us 14 inch guns. Sorry, we're not dealing with 14 inch guns anymore. A good research breakthrough. Germany is sounding us out about an alliance. Well, how very interesting. Thank you very, Ger <laughs> Thank you very much, Germany. So thinking about a German alliance, although we have nothing to fear from Germany, their fleet could be a help in various battles and allying with Germany will increase tensions. As the last option says, we will be stronger alone, unencumbered by alliances that may heighten tensions. No, 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 we want tensions to be heightened. So I think that's a good idea. Boom, Italy gives more money and so does Britain. So uh, there you go. No bother with Germany. Soviet Union doesn't like it. Well, pff, oh dear, oh dear. Let's see if we can get this tension to go up. Four destroyers commissioned. Excellent. Germans would like to buy whatever it is they can have it. That's great. My, whoa, my, my money, I was going to point out, was starting to leach away. Um, but the destroyers being commissioned has uh, taken the monthly balance back into positive and the sale of uh, technology to the Germans has restored our balance to almost what it was. Plus a new breakthrough as well enables three and four inch twin dual purpose mounts. So that's a weight saving. It increases the number of anti-aircraft positions on the ship and is good all round. Having a look at our ships under construction, what's going to be completed? Well, a whole raft more destroyers, which is lovely. The first of the Marseillaise is going to be completed. Hmm. Which is sort of implying to me I should start the second one, but it's been a while, so I should probably look to um, improving that. Let's go and uh, uh, not auto design. Let's go and open up. Marseille S and see what we can do differently. So we've got 245 tons remaining straight away. We've got these single four inch turrets. So they could go into doubles and that increases our weight remaining to 270. AA positions are much the same. So I'm going to increase the four inch guns to 12, increase the medium up as far as I can. I've still got weight remaining. I can't put any mines on it. That's a shame. I'm going to take the engine priority from speed to normal. Ah, <laughs> that had slightly too big an impact. So let's go back to speed. I would love to increase the deck armor, but I can't. I could increase the number of rounds by 20. Could increase the number of four inch guns. So I'd have to lower this. Or I could put another scout plane on it. I think I'm minded to do that. I don't really have many scout planes. I didn't put any on the uh, new class of light cruiser. Possibly a mistake. I haven't built a seaplane carrier. Several other nations I noted in the Almanac have, so I might need to build one or two. Change the name. Sully. Okay. It's okay with that. It's gonna take three months to design. More commissionings. So this is interesting. USA appears to be considering a naval rearmament program. Now, this is 1926, 1926, 27, 28 is exactly the time when Britain and the USA are often running around about neck and neck in their uh, economies. And the USA is probably going to have a growth spurt and start to really power ahead of Britain and the rest of the countries. Do I want to condemn it and strengthen our own Navy? Well, yes. Uh, it says we could always complain at the next disarmament conference. Had it asked, shall we call the disarmament conference? I could have, I could have been tempted to have that, but without that, I'm, uh, I'm going to say yes. 
So that's increased our tensions with America, but still, you know, it's a pretty peaceful place. Just checking in with uh, my three year plan, which ends this year. I wanted to build a Dukan. That's uh, going to be completed in eight months. I wanted to build two Marseillaise. I nearly finished one and I have design study on an improved one. Complete two Tages. Well, the Tages were superseded by the Victor Hugos and I've still one to build of them and complete 10 Arpons. So they're almost done. All I need to do is build one more CL and um, I'm good. Let's do that. Build Victor Hugo. Uh, definitely wants to call it four bin. Okay, that's that. Now we still have a monthly balance of just under three and a half thousand. With that, first of all, I'm going to deal with some of these obsolescents, which are serious. So the Bouvets, for example, are second newest battleships and are already 10 years old. So let's see what we can do with them. Now, they've not had a refit. So this will be the first time. Let's see what it says. It says it's all fine. Oh, OK. So there's actually nothing that I have to do. I do notice, however, it's got no anti-aircraft defense whatsoever. We do have 184 tons spare. I might just put some double turrets for these three inches and take that up to eight, leave 75 and bring in another 30 and then a few more lights we're a bit over we could get rid of these torpedoes because 1926 still a bit light which is a shame i mean ugh, 80 rounds per main gun i mean i know they're 50 inch, uh, 15 inches but sheesh that's shocking if i take this down to six hmm, maybe lose the lights okay that gives us zero i'm not thrilled by that i could if I take down if I take down the six inches, I get a couple of hundred tons, so I'm happier with that. I'm tempted to see what adding a scout plane to to this, but then no, I, I don't want battleships to be stopping in the middle of the sea picking up seaplanes. So that's a bad idea. I could increase these four inches to three and then go to town a little bit more. And then well, actually, that gives us exactly 99. Let's just see if that's all fine. That's all fine. So, yeah, 53 tons left for the next fire control or something like that. Four months, costing 900 a month for the two of them. Seems like a good use of money. So let's do that. And then let's have a look at the sufferings. These are nearly the same age. They're 10 inches, unlike these of the Corbairs. Let's look at the Corbair first. So the Corbair, okay. Now this is, this is more interesting because the Corbairs have two triple turrets. And the nice things about triple turrets is that they can be decreased to double turrets and the caliber of gun increased without it becoming a complete nonsense. Let's increase this to something a bit more competitive. Decrease the guns. Now, yes, this does mean that we will have some single turret guns, but that, that can't be helped. Well, that would give us seven 16 inch guns. Okay. It costs 34,000, which is quite a lot, but, and this is the realization I had the previous year, but if I do this kind of refit, it's going to mean that these two ships don't have to be retired quite so soon as it was looking like. Now, admittedly, they have, you know, zero protection against this, but, you know, their guns go out to 30,000 yards. It would make people think twice about it. 
Let's just see if there's anything else. I think this is an interesting solution to the block obsolescence problem, or at least takes the pressure off. Yeah, 34,000 is a lot, but to build a completely new battleship with 16 inch guns is going to cost something in the region of 130,000. So cheap at the price. Okay, if we check this, it's fine with the 16 inch guns. Fire control can be improved, elevation can be improved. I could have better secondary guns and they could have a director. So let's chip in with those. Okay, that's increased it to 39. We've still got nearly 500 tons remaining. So I'm going to improve the anti-aircraft on this. I say improve, <laughs> create some. So let's go for 12 of those. Let's go for, I don't know, 30 of those and 29 and fill up the rest. The medium guns seem to be so much more effective than the light anti-aircraft. Still a bit of weight remaining. Let me just check. It's fine with that. Can I squeeze on a couple more? Uh, yes, I can. Um, it doesn't. Oh, I haven't put dual purpose. OK, uh, I've used up with the extra three inches. I've used up too much space here. That's not a problem. OK, that's all fine. I wonder if they can be four inches. It can. Takes away almost all of our weight remaining does increase the heavy to 18 against 14. Hmm. Could get rid of the um, torpedoes on this as well on the basis of, um, well, torpedo range will be increasing to the extent that you are almost certainly in torpedo range most of the time. And the only reason for not launching at such extreme range is that obviously by the time the torpedo has traveled you'll have moved on so much so let's clear those mounts increase that and give ourselves four inch liking that that is a significant anti-air capability not bothering with seaplanes a hefty seven inch broadside and yeah these single turrets are a bit on the other hand, there's a lot of resilience there. You know, you can take out a turret and it's still got others. So if it's happy, it does seem to be, uh, then I'm happy. Yes, it's only 20 knots and it would be great to re-engine it. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to save this design. But I'm not going to go to the build dialog box because I'm just going to see what re-engineering would do. So it gives us an extra 300. It's not enough to make a significant improvement. So let's get rid of those and then come and rebuild these ships according to this design, keeping the original engines. Yes, I do. So that sent those two. Now, yeah, that's that's caused a bit of a hefty minus number there. So I, uh, I might have to manage this a little bit better, but it feels good to have moved ahead of the block obsolescence problem a little bit. Let's go to June. The old Balkans fighting. Who is to blame? Well, wouldn't you love it to be the Soviet Union? I mean, that would be nice and straightforward, wouldn't it? Get us into a war, increase the budget. A little bit concern around here. Obviously, Germany's an ally. Can't do anything there. Britain, I don't want to anger particularly. Italy's fine. Japan's our friends. America, it would let us blame America. That's interesting. Having put four battleships into um, refit, I'm going to say no to picking on America. So let's pick on the Soviet Union, see if they bite. Ooh, up to 11 with the Soviet Union. Given my frenzied current rate of uh, construction, I'm going to have to put these three on hold. Um, the two Victor Hugos and the second Marseille. 
Um, so that brought it down from over 7,000, 7,500 to just under 3,000. It's still a little bit, bit tight, but hopefully some of these ships coming through will help with that. And I want these seven months time, there will be three 16 inch gun ships joining the Navy. I do not want to delay them. I'd love them to pop in with the war in the Soviet Union. Oh, there's another destroyer. Uh, it's offering us to sell. No, no thanks. No selling. No selling at all. Soviet Union have increased. The Sully is now ready for construction. And I'm going to have to say, not now. A bit impoverished. Into August. And September. So the Marseillaise is in commission. Hooray. And the first of our reconditioned battleships and the second one. Well, that's, that's going to help things a lot. And we're near to Torpedo Protection 4, which is great. All forward armament tech, loving that. And they uh, are on the way to understanding super heavy shells too. Carrier force. Now, interesting. So that changes the, the tactical landscape considerably. Before you had the scouting force, the main battle fleet, and the carriers were assigned to one or the other. Now we can have our own separate carrier force. The planes don't really have the full range to take much advantage of that because their range is only about 100 miles or just above at the moment, which reminds me, I need to go and look at my planes. So phew. That stops my monthly balance being in negative. Let's have a look at these plane types. Let's look at some comparisons. So fighters, where are we? We are here. We're fast, well, faster than anybody, actually. Our range at maximum is better than anybody. That's fine. Not worried about that. Dive bombers. Hmm. Everybody seems to have dive bombers except for me. Can I have a dive bomber, please? Not as such. Okie dokie. But I can seemingly have a medium bomber. Okay, that's very interesting. So let's see medium bombers. So only three countries do have medium bombers and they have ranges out to, well, when they're heavy, uh, 160. That's very interesting. Compare the heavy at 160 to a torpedo bomber, which struggles with a heavy range to be at 100. So, so this is us, and so far as we know, we've got the best range. Speed, meh, it's fine. I don't really mind any of these others. So oddly enough, the um, our torpedo bomber is competitive. Our bomb strength is less, but I don't care. So long as it can carry a torpedo, I don't mind what uh, bombing it can do. So let's ask for a proposal of a new aircraft. Come in here. It's going to be... One of these smancy pants medium bombers. Hmm. What is its first priority? That's a, that's a tough one with a medium bomber because the medium bomber is the jack of all trades, really. It needs great range and a high bomb load and to be reliable. Toughness, firepower, maneuverability, obviously less so. Toughness, probably the lead out of all of that. Speed, hmm. So let's go for range. Uh, everyone loves range and then bomb load and see what we get for that. And then finally, just out of interest, how are our flying boats doing? So where are we? Oh, there we are. Um, we don't know anybody else's range, but for medium range, which we do know, we are better than anybody so far as our poor intelligence can say. And finally, scout planes. I haven't really done anything with scout planes for a long time. Yeah, it's not obvious, but I have a suspicion that we are behind on scout planes. So let's see what we can take off from Holt. Okay, well, two months time, it'll be fine. Double gun mounts on destroyers. Excellent. Liking that too. And into November, six corvettes. So these are the Minesweeper ASW ones. Offering to sell us? No. <laughs> Afraid not. 
And Torpedo Protection 4. That, that's an excellent one for 1926 as well. And AP Projectiles. This has been a good year for Tex. And then finally into December. So hurrah for the Marseillaise. Let's all break into song. Four more Corvettes. Great stuff. And the Italians are interested in buying. Yes, yes, buy, <laughs> by all means. Uh, La Havre would like some more aeroplanes. Okay, I will sort that out. Let's take a look at the year in review. It's been a pretty good year, particularly in the shipyards with two rebuilds well underway, converting the Corbairs to have 16 inch guns. The Ducan is almost finished. I think it's got one month left. We built one of our Marseilles and a second one is well under construction. 10 new destroyers, 10 new minesweeping anti-submarine corvettes, two new light cruisers well underway as well, and successfully refitting a couple of old 12 inches to keep them current. Obviously, this has stressed our expenses, which has stayed above 30,000 almost all the time and peaked at 40,000. So our little war chest of funds has gone down from over 20,000. And we've struggled, as you can see, with uh, keeping our balance, our monthly balance in positive. Six new techs, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's, you know, better than it could have been. Tension three, big events, notably Finland defecting to the Soviet Union with a revolution. And we've gained an alliance with Germany. And the budget has increased from 355 to 398. That's one seventh increase. And so we're looking at a, uh, a pretty different landscape in terms of diplomacy with the Soviet Union, which in 24 threatened to have a war, threatening to have a war again, and peace with pretty much everybody except the USA. I would love for a war to actually break out early next year. Friends with Japan, which is great, and allies with Germany. The successful year, ex my only wish is that actually we had tipped it into actual war. But hopefully next year. Hope you can join me. 